This is the trumpet, also known as the bugle, horn, cornet, or flugelhorn. Now this video will provide the 10 best high note trumpet players of all time, otherwise known as screamers. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the top 10 trumpet screamers of all time. Now I know this video is purely subjective, I know that. But if you think there's somebody that I've left off this list, pop it in the comment section. But if you're gonna pop somebody else on this list, you must tell me in the comment section who you're gonna take off the list. Here we go. Maynard Ferguson, Canadian jazz trumpeter and band leader, came to prominence in Stan Kenton's orchestra before forming his own big band in 1957. He was well known for his bands and his ability to play in the high register. Now he's not the original high note guy, but he's definitely my favorite. That's why I started with him. Born and raised in Montreal, quits high school at 15 to pursue a music career, gets hooked up with Stan Kenton in the 1950s, the Birdland Dream Band, and then has stints in India and England before coming back to the US for what I think was his golden era. And in 1970 puts out MF Horn, 1972 puts out MF Horn 2, my favorite album of all time. And in 1973 puts out MF Horn 3, also in 1973 MF Horn 4 and 5 live at Jimmy's. And then the next five years puts out a string of unbelievable material. The arrangements, the bands, Maynard was at his best. 1974, he puts out Chameleon. 1976, Primal Scream. 1977, maybe at his height with Conquistador and New Vintage. 1978, Carnival. Those albums right there did it for me. Maynard's my favorite high note screamer of all time. I had to start with Maynard. Doc Severinsen, American jazz trumpeter who led the NBC Orchestra on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Grows up in Oregon. Right after high school, he goes out on tour with Tommy Dorsey and Benny Goodman. In 1949, he lands a studio musician job at NBC, and then in 1962, he becomes the first chair trumpeter in The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Five years later, Severinsen was leading the band. He leads that band from 1962 to 1992, when Johnny Carson retired. Now, people often talk about his crazy outfits and his crazy sense of humor, but this guy could play. He's not a true screamer, in my opinion. The thing and the reason I've got him on here is that his precision in the upper register was just so good. I saw him twice on the Johnny Carson show in the 90s, and he sounded better live than he did on all the albums and CDs that I listened to. This guy, impressive, live, precision in that upper register. That's why he's on my list. Bill Chase, American trumpeter and leader of the jazz rock band Chase. He's born in Massachusetts. He eventually goes and studies classical trumpet after high school, but then comes back around and he plays lead trumpet for Maynard Ferguson in 1958, Stan Kent in 1959. Woody Herman's band in the 1960s. In the early 1970s, he starts his own group, Chase, which combines rock, blues, pop, four trumpets, screaming trumpets, great arrangements. In 1971, they release their debut album, Chase. Now the song, Get It On, spent 13 weeks on the charts in May 1971. They were well known for their complex cascading lines, a literal waterfall of trumpet, timber, and technique. They received the Best New Artist Grammy nomination. 1972, they put out the second album, Enya. The album's title is a Greek word for nine, a reference to the nine band members. And then they put out their third album, Pure Music. Shortly after that, in 1974, Chase, on route to a gig, dies in a plane crash. 
way before his time. This guy is a legit screamer, innovative, unique, sitting here wondering what sort of music he could have put out after that. He was well known for his encouragement of long tones to develop his embouchure and the higher register. Also very physically fit. Miss this guy, would have loved to have heard what he would have put out. Third guy on the list and a legit screamer. John Faddis, American jazz trumpet player, conductor, composer, educator. He was originally known to closely mirror the sound of trumpet icon Dizzy Gillespie. Born in Oakland, California, at 18 he joins the Lionel Hampton Band. In his 20s he plays with Charles Mingus and then eventually becomes a noted studio musician in New York City in the 70s and the 80s. It was a 1989 album, Into the Fatosphere, and the title track that made him a lock for this video if you follow my channel. You might have seen a video I just did on John Fattis. That tune is incredible. Cat Anderson, American jazz trumpet player known for his long period as a member of Duke Ellington's orchestra and his wide range, especially his ability to play in the high register. Born in South Carolina, he lost his parents when he was four and was sent to an orphanage where he learned to play trumpet. Now in 1944, his career really took off when he joined Duke Ellington's orchestra. He was a very versatile trumpet player and Leonard Feather described his style as somewhere between Louis Armstrong and Harry James, but he was most renowned for his ability to play in the extreme high range. Now he had a big sound in all registers, but great power. Wynton Marcellus called him one of the best high note trumpet players of all time and when Wynton says that, people listen. Now he was much more than just a high note trumpet player, but that's the purpose of this video. And I became aware of him when I was studying Maynard Ferguson and there was references to Cat Anderson. Cat is the man. He started it all back in the 40s and I'm sure all the other trumpet players on this list knew about Cat. Wayne Bergeron, American jazz trumpeter. Bergeron rose to prominence as a member of the Maynard Ferguson band back in the 1980s. Since then, he's worked on over 400 TV and motion picture soundtracks. As a lead and studio player, he's notable for his ability to play in the upper register of the instrument. We call that a screamer. And some of his screaming can be heard in the 2004 Disney Pixar animated movie, The Incredibles. Now he is on faculty at the Los Angeles College of Music and the principal trumpet for the Pantages Theater in Hollywood. Born in Hartford, Connecticut, grew up in LA, first started playing a French horn and then switched to trumpet in his early teens. Like I said, in 1986, he won the spot of lead trumpeter for Maynard Ferguson's band. He has gone on as a sideman to record with so many different artists. He's also contributed huge when it comes to movies like Despicable Me, Dreamgirls, Frozen, Rounders, Superman Returns, The Incredibles, and Toy Story 3. He now holds the role of lead trumpet in Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band. I continue to see him on Maynard Ferguson tribute band videos, and on those videos he's playing Maynard's part. He is screaming. Arturo Sandoval, Cuban-American jazz trumpeter, pianist, and composer. While living in his native Cuba, Sandoval was influenced by jazz musicians like Charlie Parker, Clifford Brown, and Dizzy Gillespie. In 1977, he eventually met Gillespie, who became his friend and mentor and helped him defect from Cuba. He became an American naturalized citizen in 1998. He has won 10 Grammy Awards, Billboard Awards, and one Emmy Award. He's performed at the White House and the Super Bowl. Sandoval is just not a screamer. He's a lock to be on this list but he also is well-rounded when it comes to his Latin jazz, performing with guys like Tito Puente. He's also got some classical chops. He's also an educator. He's taught at Florida International University. He's performed with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, Pittsburgh Symphony, and the National Symphony Orchestras. Although he deserves to be on this list, he is also well-rounded with his background in Latin jazz, performances with the Mambo Kings, Grammy Awards in 1992 with Best Instrumental Composition, November 20th, 2013, President Barack Obama presented Sandoval with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And December 8th, 2024, Sandoval is slated to receive the Kennedy Center Honor. Huge props to Sandoval. 
Louis Dowdswell, English jazz trumpeter. Wikipedia says he's known for his ability to play in the upper register of the instrument. He played lead trumpet with the National Youth Jazz Orchestra from 2012 to 2014. He graduated from the Royal Academy of Music in 2016. He has performed with some heavyweights like Jamie Collum, one of my favorite singers of all time, Al Jarreau, Michael Buble, and Josh Groban. He formed the Louis Dowdswell Big Band in which he collaborated with fellow trumpeter Wayne Bergeron, and you've heard Wayne's name on this list already. They arranged a series of movie and TV series soundtracks including Game of Thrones, The Incredible Suite, and Let It Go for Jazz Band. He has played soundtracks for movies including No Time to Die. This guy is a legit screamer. I became more familiar with him with his social media presence. He is the youngest guy on this list. And if you look at his social media presence, he's been innovative in promoting himself across all these social media platforms. If you look at YouTube alone, he has nearly 100,000 subscribers. Those videos he has on YouTube have over 20 million views. He's done a great job at promoting himself across social media platforms, along with being the young up and coming screamer on this list. Wynton Marsalis, American trumpeter, composer, and musical instructor, who is currently the artistic director at Jazz at Lincoln Center. He has studied classical and jazz music. He has won nine Grammy Awards. He was born in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1961, was given a trumpet at the age of six, but did not start practicing until he was 12. He worked hard through high school and eventually was admitted to Juilliard School in New York City. This guy is a legit musical heavyweight and I know I'm gonna get some flack for having him on this list, but in the last year I've just heard too much of his music displaying his precision in that upper register that I could not deny him from being on this list. He's been called somewhat of a jazz purist and his awards are endless. As a result, He's not a pure screamer, but his precision in the upper register, in my opinion, puts him on this list. Eric Mirashiro, American-born trumpeter of Japanese descent. After graduating high school in Boston, he received a scholarship to the Berklee College of Music in 1982. After two years, he joined the Buddy Rich Big Band, with whom he performed for seven years. At times, he received lessons from Bobby Shu, Doc Severinsen, and Maynard Ferguson, among others. He's a composer and arranger and music teacher. Eric came to my attention when I saw that Gonna Fly Now Maynard Ferguson tribute. The video came out 16 years ago. It has 1.7 million views on YouTube. Wayne Bergeron, also from this list, is on stage with Eric. That six minute video is just unbelievable. It's an awesome tribute to the number one trumpet player on this list, Maynard Ferguson. And Eric's playing in that video makes him a lock for this top 10 screamers of all time. I hope you enjoyed this video on the top 10 trumpet screamers of all time. If you've got an artist or band you'd like featured on this YouTube channel, pop it in the comment section. I'll make another video. Thanks for dropping by. Rock on.